Joining me right now is Dr. Catherine Chen, who has done a tremendous amount of research on apps and is giving a speech about delivering apps to OBGYN healthcare providers. Thank you so much for being here because yes. I know there really can be this sense of app overload. There are so many choices for people and you're trying to really whittle them down? Yes. Um, so. One of the researchers mentioned that going to an um, app store is like going to an urban flea market. There's definitely high quality goods in this urban flea market, but then there's like really low quality, dubious value goods, and there's no one there to tell you which one to go to. So that's what my team does. We're interested in trying to direct people to the useful apps. First, we start off with OBGYN healthcare providers and then apps now for patients. Okay, talk about a useful app, a new one, the EDD, and that is yes. the Estimated Due Date Calculator. Right, right. So this is quite fascinating in that um, ACOG, um, their technology team, decided they wanted to help with um, assisting in estimating due dates for healthcare providers. And what they wanted to do was standardize it, and they followed guidelines. Um, so it's the only due date calculator that actually reconciles the due dates that you obtain from an ultrasound as well as the last menstrual period. And this has been really a collaboration. You've got the American Institute of Ultrasound yes. Medicine, ACOG of course as well, and the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine. Mm -hmm. So looking at all of those different conceptual things to, to get the correct due date perhaps. Exactly, right. Yes, before we used to have to do some mental calculations in our head or rely on um, you know, uh, formulas that we use, but now we can just use this app and be able to get the correct due date. And ACOG has an app of its own, of course. Yes, and so the estimated due date calculator is within the ACOG app. The ACOG app actually has gone through a revision and now you can actually obtain um, ob references very easily, particularly the committee opinions and the practice bulletins. And that wasn't possible before. The latter, you had to go through the website and then go through, but now they're all there at your fingertips. There are so many different categories, and I think that yes. seems to be a good way to break things down, to maybe find the apps that would be helpful in your practice. Um, Non-medical, some drug reference, mm -hmm. uh, medical translators. Right, yes. So when I give my talk, I usually break it down into different categories. And so, for example, you mentioned I have some critical non-medical apps that I think healthcare providers should have. And so, for example, a cloud storage device like Dropbox or a PDF reader, note writer, and that's like Evernote. Um, and then, yeah, drug reference apps, Medscape, uh, Properties for medical translators, Medibabble, Canopy. Um, so there's quite a few, you know, categories. OBGYN reference apps from the CDC, on goopy strep and sexually transmitted infections. You know, there's, um, you know, there's quite a wealth of them out there. And yeah. these are apps maybe not just good for providers, but some of them good for communicating with sure. patients as well. Yes, so there's another category which I call um, patient apps. And so a dream of mine is that, you know how we prescribe medications? Well, we would be prescribing apps for patients. So for a young menstruating woman, we could prescribe a menstrual cycle tracking app, like Clue or Glow. Um, for patients who are pregnant, there could be um, contraction apps. Um, yes, so there's you know an app um, that replaces what to expect when you're expecting, uh, developed by one of the universities. So they're very you know helpful for them. Then there's some fun apps like Baby Names, some fun apps for our, um, healthcare providers, such as Eponyms. Are yes. there things, though, that providers need to worry about? I mean, not every app out there clearly is yes. the best it can be, and that's where your research is so key. Right. You know, what we were um, astounded to find, we knew there was app overload, there, that there are hundreds of health apps, and we knew that people would have to whittle them down find, to find the useful ones. In our studies, what we were very um, astounded to find was that some of the apps were not accurate. So, for example, the pregnancy will apps or the due date apps, we found that over half of them actually were not accurate. So that you punch in a you know prescribed, we had a standard um, last menstrual periods and they wouldn't give us the correct due date if it was a leap year. Um, yes, so 
Yeah, so it, inaccuracy is, is a big concern. Well, thank you for doing all the work because it's a full-time job to figure out the best apps and now the providers have you to thank for it. Yeah, it's we a lot of fun. My residents and fellows enjoy doing the research. Well, thank we appreciate you. it. Thank you, Dr. Chen.